Hello, hi, uh, I am uh, Dr. Srinivasan Paramasivam. I am a neurosurgeon and a neuroendovascular surgeon. I am one of the hybrid neurosurgeons who does uh, both open surgery as well as uh, minimally invasive neuroendovascular procedures. And I work at Apollo Hospitals, Chennai. Today I would like to uh, talk uh, briefly about acute stroke and its burden. You would be uh, confused to see a neurosurgeon talk about an acute stroke because it has always been in the neurologist domain. But today the scenario of acute stroke has changed a lot throughout the world. Today uh, the way we treat acute stroke has uh, significantly changed. Uh, acute stroke is managed by both neurologists, neurosurgeons and neuroendovascular surgeons. Today we have advanced treatment for stroke and the awareness of these new treatments has largely been lacking in our society but in the western world where I've worked at Mount Sinai Hospital for the past seven years we have treated many patients with acute stroke using these newer treatment and my goal is to create awareness uh, in India and to bring these new treatments uh, to, to people in need in India because the stroke burden in Asian countries uh, like India, China, Pakistan, Bangladesh is extremely high and we need to make an effort at this point to treat patients with acute stroke. In the past, it has, be, it has always been thought that acute strokes are not treatable. Once a stroke hits a patient, uh, they are paralyzed forever. But the scenario is changing rapidly. First, in 1996, uh, intravenous treatment for acute stroke was introduced and IVTPA was used in patients with acute stroke less than three hours. Later, the window was extended up to four and a half hours. In 2006, a first approved device for endovascular treatment of acute stroke was introduced. It was called Mercy device, which did a great job in recanalizing the uh, arteries um, that are blocked while going to the brain. When we talk about acute strokes, Acute stroke uh, are of different types. Uh, one is uh, most commonly acute strokes are due to blockage of the blood vessel that goes to the brain and there is another type of an acute stroke where there is hemorrhage into the brain. An occlusive acute stroke which is uh, embolic or thrombotic acute stroke are much more commoner. About 80% of the acute strokes are due to vessel occlusion and about 20% are due to hemorrhage. After 2006, uh, where we used Mercy device, in 2009 came newer devices called Penumbra. Then in 2012, we started using a stent retriever for retrieving clot in patients with acute stroke. So this has completely shifted the way we treat acute strokes. And today, a patient having a clot in the uh, larger blood vessels of the brain, we are able to put in a catheter through which we are able to introduce a device to completely remove uh, the clot from the uh, blood vessels in the brain and re-establish flow. And when we are able to do this within the first eight hours of onset of stroke, we are able to completely cure them. In about at least about 60% of the patients have a significant improvement following this treatment. So among all our patients, we should tell them that newer treatments are available and they should come to us with acute stroke. But a significant problem in treating acute stroke is that compared to the cardiac uh, is a cardiac disease that is heart attack the brain attack we call it is painless so patients usually don't get to us on time because they tend to sit with the uh, neurologic minor neurologic deficit that they may have and they don't really get to us on time so we should create awareness among the public we should create awareness among the primary care physicians uh, to identify these acute strokes and sent to a higher center for treatment because that first uh, four to eight hours really matters for a patient. I want to discuss with you about a case scenario. Uh, this is very interesting because uh, this is actually a doctor who is practicing, who is an anesthesiologist who has seen a lot in his life. He's a 65 year old anesthesiologist who is practicing in an outside country, but he came to India to visit his uh, friends and relatives. And, uh, at about 8 p.m. in the night, 
he developed uh, some visual obscurations on one side. He went to ophthalmologist who checked him and said, okay, nothing wrong with the eye. And then he went home. The next day morning he woke up, he was reading the newspaper. He was able to read something, but he was not able to really understand what he was reading. And this confusion was there throughout the day. He was trying to call people, but he was not able to find their name and he had so much difficulty in remembering simple stuff that happened through the day. As his confusion progressed through the day, um, he came to the hospital at about 7 p.m. in the night. And I received the call about this patient. I really thought that um, we should do vascular imaging and then we did the vascular imaging and we found that his uh, left internal carotid artery was completely occluded. And in the hospital, we could see him progressing down. He deteriorated and we took him to the cath lab immediately to see what was going on. We, uh, I mean, we saw the ICA was occluded because he was outside the window period, uh, but his symptoms were so subtle, we didn't want to give up. We did a CT angiogram with CT perfusion. And the CT angiogram showed that he had good collaterals that were sustaining his brain in spite of a large vessel occlusion. And then the CT perfusions showed some infarct, uh, minimal infarct with large area of penumbra. So I thought this is a time I can intervene and help this patient. Immediately took him to the cath lab, recanalize the internal carotid artery. We do recanalization today by two means. One is we introduce a suction catheter wherein we suck out the clot that is occluding the blood vessels of the brain or we introduce a uh, stent retriever, a small basket-like uh, uh, stent. We put it across the clot and we remove the clot. And by this way, I completely recanalized him and right after the procedure, the patient was able to understand everything. He was able to recollect names and uh, we, we, uh, he, he was so happy that uh, he, he recovered completely. So right after the procedure, he improved significantly and um, he was able to um, understand all that was spoken to him. He was able to read newspapers and um, he was able to recollect names the following day and uh, uh, he was so thankful for the procedure being done. Uh, I'm, I'm presenting this case just to tell you that even among physicians today there is so much lack of awareness about acute stroke. Acute stroke can present with complete loss of function or maybe it as subtle as small visual disturbance or speech disturbance, difficulty in understanding. Those minimal strokes are the ones we can really like prevent it from progressing. So uh, an awareness among the public, among physicians is absolutely necessary to uh, treat acute strokes. Thank you.